I wonder if I can do like an old person voice for this one. Gather back around, children, again. <laughs> the big trucks have dropped off boxes with a bunch of apples in them. It's ripe season for the... Now I sound like some sort of wizard. It's ripe season for those new iPhones and Apple Watches, and we're about to take our first bite. Well, not me personally. Mine has not come in yet because, well, the rest of our guys are on the East Coast where delivery trucks happen earlier than they happen here for me in the West Coast. <laughs> but before we have our dessert, we've got dinner, a smorgasbord of new things to talk about, Amazon's new Echo speakers, and and an Alexa-powered microwave? A OnePlus television set is included, a Bixby key that will never not work, and the Galaxy Note 9 that has that key and a problem with temperature. Oh, a note up in smoke. Here we go again. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 324 of the weekly brought to you by PocketNow and XDA developers on this day, Friday, the 21st of September 2018 from phones, tablets, smartwatches, microwaves. Yeah, we're talking about smart microwaves, mi microwaves now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get talking about all the things that you wanted when you were a kid. Let's get chatting. I'm your host with not quite the iPhone XS Max. Not yet. It is out for delivery right now i am watching the ups tracking like like a hawk right now i'm just waiting for it to come in but then i gotta drive all the way back home to grab it anyway but it's joshua vergara what's going on everybody and today we are joined by brandon miniman who joins us with his own you actually have it in your hands <laughs> the oh that's a huge looking phone <laughs> oh my god doesn't this look excessive see what i did there <laughs> <laughs> so how is that phone treating you right now like how many hours have you even had it for so far um, like three, but like half of that time it was setting up and downloading my apps and data. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, the setup is something that I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm not really, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not super excited about the iPhone coming in. Um, I'm excited because it's a new piece of technology and I'm really excited to like, you know, play around with it and see what it's like. Um, but I've never really had an iPhone for a long period of time. So I'm going to be downloading everything fresh. Everything's going to be new to me. So I don't know, getting to know a new ecosystem, it's going to be interesting for me. Well, that's good. You're starting from scratch. It'll be nice and fast. Oh, that's true. That's true. Well, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm not the biggest proponent of full screen gestures or huge phones. So <laughs> this is going to be an extra, <laughs> this is going to be an extra, uh, an extra, uh, uh, um, journey for me. Uh, and also, we are going to be joined by Jaime Rivera, who also has the iPhone XS, not the Max, as uh, Brandon and I will have, but he will have an Apple Watch Series 4. Uh, he'll be coming in in a few minutes, and we'll be talking about that a little bit. Um, now, I just want to give one quick shout. I want to make sure that we give Jules uh, his due. He is in the producer's booth still, but he's kind of in under the weather for a little bit, so he won't be chiming in much um, on this particular podcast. But shouts out to Jules still in the producer's booth. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our stories. And our first story for today is, uh, well, it's a little, okay, trigger warning for anyone who had a Note 7. <laughs> uh, as it seems with the Galaxy Note 9, which I have mine just sitting right on my table right now, apparently this is still, it might still be, a bit of a dangerous piece of kit to have because a New York woman has uh, launched a lawsuit against Samsung after her Note 9 got extremely hot and started to emit black smoke while she was in an elevator where she panicked and kicked the phone as far as she could the moment those elevator doors opened. Now, this particular phone, the Galaxy Note 9, does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery in it. It's the largest of any Galaxy device, um, or at least in the Note series. And uh, that comes out after the 3,300 milliamp hour battery of the Note 8, which they did bring down in capacity after all of the debacles that happened with the Note 7, which had a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. Uh, and ever since the Note 7, Samsung has said that they have so many checks and balances in place now when it comes to their battery manufacturing. But maybe, maybe that's not quite the case. This is one instance, Brandon, but do you feel scared about the Note 9 after hearing this story? No, in fact, I, I would like to see proof and witnesses that this actually happened. It sounds oh. kind of strange. You know, it happened in an elevator where no one can see, you know? True, but there, there, there are cameras in that elevator. We should get that footage, right? Can we make that happen? I'd love to see the footage. <laughs> XDA and Pocket Now doing their investigative journalism. I would love that, actually. Why don't we call this? Uh, we should call this hotel and see if we can get that uh, that uh, that video. Or maybe the maybe someone's going to unearth it. Uh, but yeah, there's a multi-stage battery check process for all of its devices, but can processes like that actually be perfect? I would venture to say no. There's always going to be a couple of, uh, there's always going to be a couple that kind of fall through the cracks. Um, 
also this particular hotel was in Bayside, Queens, apparently. Uh, so it was reported by the New York Post. So that makes sense. Uh, but like, not every process is perfect. If one slips through the cracks, is this that big a deal? I guess not. I mean, there's a there's like a small percentage of phones that are defective in certain ways, like the screen doesn't work or the battery. I mean, it's it's dangerous if the battery has a problem with heat and you know catches on fire. But like, there's a def there's a percent defect for the entire phone, uh, and someone's got to have the you know the point oh one percent. That has <laughs> yeah. the battery problem. Um, I think it's just a coincidence. I mean, like everyone remembers what happened with the Note Seven, and you know they're just uh, on. You know that that wouldn't be the craziest thing ever if the Note Nine or the Note Eight had the same problem. I mean, it's the same company, and they've put certain checks and balances in place to avoid it. But if any company is going to be victim to this, it will be Samsung. Have you had have has your Note Nine um, uh, ever gotten like super hot in your usage so far? Uh, no, but it's got the liquid cooled, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of ironic, right? That there's a cooling system in there, and yet the issue here is that it became extremely, extremely hot. I actually have a story about that. Um, my my girlfriend, who's in my office right now, working on her side of things, uh, Issa Rodriguez of Gadget Match. Um, she's she's writing right now using my <laughs> using my noise canceling headphones, um, so she can't even hear me. Anyway, her phone is an Exynos version of the Note Nine. And when we were in Cabo, I was on vacation for the past week. Um, what, when we were in Cabo San Lucas, the phone was constantly getting really hot, like uncomfortably hot. Nothing bad happened, but she does admit that two things were happening. Uh, number one, the uh, the phone was getting hot, which was kind of weird, but I told her that the cooling should be keeping it performing well enough, even if it's getting warm. And uh, sure enough, the phone still per like performed pretty well. Number two, uh, her battery life has not been great. On the Exynos version, compared to my uh, Snapdragon edition, so I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we can investigate a little bit further. But clearly, her phone is the Exynos one, and I don't know. Maybe there's something. There's something different going on there. So. That's surprising. Uh, maybe there's some background process that's you know running in the background using RAM and CPU cycles. Perhaps so. And uh, one of those background processes uh, is one that we all kind of, okay, there's, it's not to say that it's a bad service. Uh, it's just not one that many of us really use. I'm talking, of course, about Bixby. So uh, there was a story that we covered on this this very show, uh, I think it was maybe two, maybe three weeks ago, where somebody out in Germany, if I remember correctly, uh, said that they, they 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 tweeted out to Samsung that, like, please stop the Bixby button. Uh, please, please stop it from uh, just let give me give me the option to disable it please and samsung uh germany said that they would look into it well as far as uh as far as that would be concerned an update might be coming a little bit later this month but as of right now it looks like the bixby button is never not going to be triggering bixby they're just going to make it so that it might be just a tiny bit maybe one percent harder for you to <laughs> trigger it because this hilarious photo Honestly, it, I, I love this. Jules wrote this article. This hilarious photo shows Bixby key. Select how to open Bixby with the Bixby key. Press once to open Bixby. Press twice to open Bixby. Pressing and holding the Bixby key will always open Bixby voice. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven references to the word Bixby in one screen. <laughs> Samsung's trying really hard, but they're trying to uh, appease their, their, their customers just enough to shut them up, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Did I come at the wrong time? I feel that. Of course, yes. Oh, you came in at just the perfect time. <laughs> no, I don't want to talk about Bixby, guys. Like, really? <laughs> if, if I, if I'm I sure we've care. got better things to talk about. If well, I didn't, uh, if I didn't care about resale, which I do because I want to sell my Note 9 eventually, I would I would cut off the Bixby key, which I'm very close to doing. You just take a razor and just shave it off, and then it's completely flush with the with the side rails, and you, you'll probably never press it again. Just I call Zach. Wish... He's the expert. He did that. He popped it <laughs> off, and it was fine. <laughs> oh, perfect. I just want it to be contextual. I wish it was okay. If you want this thing, if you want this button to be about smart, whatever, a smart assistance in your phone, make it smarter then. If I'm in the camera app, don't let it do anything because I constantly, okay, so um, kind of a peek behind the veil here. I am rocking a, uh, obviously, my Note 9 is my. Um, it's my daily, but I actually have an early look at the moment case for it. So I used the moment lenses on my vacation last week in Cabo. So you know you can look forward to that. Uh, but I use this for vlogging for for most of my trip. So what I do is I put the wide angle on here and I turn it around and I always hit the volume down button in order to trigger video recording. So that's mm -hmm. a really easy way of vlogging. Um, 
which is awesome. Uh, and I like using the rear camera for vlogging in that case. But every now and then I hit the Bixby button and then I got to come back and go away Bixby and go back to it. Why not give me an option just in the camera app? Just give me this in the camera app that the Bixby button can trigger video recording and the volume down button can be a photo. Just give me that. Just, just just, give me that, and I will give you all the faith in the world that you're not trying to shove Bixby down our throats. <laughs> it's so simple. Or while watching a video or some, so give you like a white list of apps, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or if I'm listening to music and I accidentally hit it. Like, be contextual. Be smarter, Bixby. <laughs> That's all I want out of it. Yep. Um, but that that is our story on Bixby, at least for this week. I don't know if we're going to get more about it, but um, Samsung did say an update will come later this month. This potentially will probably be... Mm -hmm where it ends, but we'll see what the update does later on. Jaime came in at the perfect time because our next story is about his new toy, the, the Apple Watch. The, the, the one that I'm actually setting up because um, you guys are talking about something I don't really like. <laughs> how much do we have a, a clock over how much time we spent on Bixby? <laughs> I, well, I, I tried lifetime. my best not to go too far, but that, that camera that's, one was that, real that's, life scenario. That Samsung is just to give you an idea how much we would prefer a camera key. Yeah, not like, you know, forcing something that just I, I mean, Bixby was fine with the Note 8. It became terrible with the with the Note 9. I don't know why. There's something about it. I'm not sure. Um, I think okay. it's because in the Note 9, it's full screen, whereas in the Note 8, it was just kind of like kind of like on the bottom of the screen. Or the no, it's just it's just predictions. Predictions on Bixby like went downhill with the Note 9. Oh, come on. I'm not talking to you. Damn it. <laughs> Speaking of. So funny. Speaking of. Yeah. Well, our next story has to do with uh, one of, okay, so if you've been listening to the podcast for the last two weeks, you know that Jaime has a lot of opinions on the Apple Watch. <laughs> All right. And, and now we are talking about the Series 4, whose uh, one of its main claims to potential fame is the fact that it can do ECG readings. However, despite being FDA approved, apparently it is only it only has an accuracy rate of 98 percent, which means that it could it could be potentially unreliable. Yeah, but the feature is uh, not even enabled right now. So, oh, it really isn't. Oh, no, okay. it's, it's not. Apparently, there, there will be a software update later. Um, and uh, once that happens, we'll see. But, uh, okay. Uh, no. Well, potentially the well, well uh, apparently the uh, the FDA approval happened literally the day before the announcement. So there's some speculation that Apple just like just barely made it work. But which is funny to me because they they were able to make it work so they could talk about it on stage, and yet it's still not available. So clearly there are kinks to be worked out. That's exactly <laughs> the point. They made it just available and just approved by the FDA, so they could mention it at the keynote. Yeah, and um, yeah, there you go, Jules. With the uh, with the reminder, the American Heart Association uh, representative that was on stage as well. Um, I barely, I barely was able to catch most of the keynote because I was at an airport getting ready to go to Cabo. But um, Isa and I were uh, were watching the the, the the keynote from my phone, from my Note Nine <laughs> of all things. And uh, we were. I, I thought that was. Yeah. An, I thought that was impossible. <laughs> use the Samsung. Use what browser did you use? Because it doesn't let you. Twitter. Screen. Twitter reaches every phone. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> um, there was a whole section of Twitter that was dedicated to just the Apple event. So if you search for hashtag Apple event, there was a feed at the top of just the keynote. And Interesting. Yeah, we had a lot of... Uh, I wanted us to vlog about our opinions of the keynote, but we didn't catch most of it. So, And plus, we were supposed to be on vacation, so whatever. <laughs> Um, but in any case, um, you still use, so I've been watching, if you look at, uh, Jaime Rivera's, um, uh, Instagram and his stories, he's constantly using at this point, the galaxy watch for workouts and whatnot. Um, are you looking forward to using the Apple watch series four for your workouts and everything? Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to going back to an Apple watch for workouts, to be fully honest. I, mm -hmm. the galaxy watch is a very beautiful looking watch. I would say far superior to any other watch when it comes to looks, um, it's just, God, the, you know, once you go on a run on a treadmill and it doesn't calculate your pace, you're like, really? Like it's, it's just the mathematical equation between the panometer, the amount of steps permitted, and then you just divide that and you get how much, what your, what your speed is, <laughs> but yeah. you don't. and then you have to use third party applications. So I, I tried map my run. Nah, that, that wasn't great. Uh, uh okay. I tried a couple of other solutions, you know, and these were actually comments, uh, comments of people recommending, try this, try that all great recommendations, but sadly, you know, once you, you put them to the test, uh, no, or they would kill the battery life or, uh, 
like again, this is a very beautiful watch, but it it needs work. Like for example, I don't know if you've if if um if you've noticed any other people complaining. I noticed people have praised it, but I'm like, okay, have how much have you actually used it for fitness? Because I actually need to use lose weight, so I've been I've been actively trying it out, and so you're halfway through your run, and the heart rate is no longer working. It doesn't find you. And so it keeps oh. recommending it keeps recommending that you pull the watch back, but then the watch is so heavy that <laughs> it, it, there's just no way. If you're doing this with your hand as you're running, it will slide from there at some point. Yeah. So it's supposed to be past that like little bone thing, right? Like this yeah. thing right here. No, no, no. That. So they, they actually want it to be all the way at the back. Oh. So, you know, part of my review, I've been, you know, putting together clips as I've been training. Uh, just to you know, create an, enough database to be like I used it for these amount of days, these amount of trainings, and this is what I got. And you know, most of the time, I'm even even if I'm spinning on the bike, like it'll lose uh, oh, wow. heart rate. Uh, and then, for example, one thing that's very accurate is GPS. Like it's funny because uh, it'll tell you that you're you, this is the amount of miles that you're running, and and it's like completely off. But then by the time you reach one mile, it knows that it's one mile. Oh, uh, so the indicator is bad, but then the, the information, you know, at least you get the mileage correct. So that's, you know, on par with even an iPhone connected, uh, you know, side by side doing testing, which is what I've been doing. All that's been fine. Um, but then these kinds of things, you know, just that one, that's one thing I don't like. The other thing is wrist detection. My God, like dear Samsung, if I do this with my watch, you know what I want to do? <laughs> You know exactly what I'm trying to do right there? Order pizza. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I really don't care. I'm not looking at it because I want to look at the rotating bezel. I actually want to look not just at the time. So I've noticed a little trick. Uh, first of all, if you use metallic bands, wrist detection's not as good. Hmm. I recommend you use either a leather band or the silicon bands included. That's just the, the metal band's too loose and it like doesn't turn as quickly. Could be. That's one thing. Then the second thing is my advice, whether you like it or not, switch the always on display. Not just because of uh, because you're going to be able to see your time, but because for some reason wrist detection works better with the always on display active. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I, I I'm still waiting for my 42 millimeter to come in, so I'm you're, you're not missing out on much, dude. <laughs> You'll, you'll well, it's, it's worthwhile to finally look at like what Samsung is doing, especially yeah. since we just came back from the Snapdragon 3100 or oh. Wear 3100. And then, of course, we have the Apple Watch 4. So it's, wor it's worth it to look at all the smartwatches and see where they're coming right now. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so Apple just had their big announcements. Obviously, the uh, the 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 Apple Watch 4. Uh, all everyone's getting their iPhones today, but not to be outdone. Amazon has gone ahead and had their own event as well. And I was watching a few. One of our buddies, Andrew Edwards, was at the event in Seattle. And Mr. wow. Amazon, you mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it looked like a lot of fun, actually. Um, but what well, I who thought was invited? Was, I don't know. Only That's Andrew. It was, it was Andrew. I think Mark Andrew. was there. Yeah, Andrew and Andrew. Yeah. Um, okay. So... Yeah, the, uh, the the event looked kind of fun. It was very Amazon-like, if, if you want to put it that way. Um, okay. But it, it just looked really trendy and hip and all that. And then this is, it had a very Amazon look to it. And then everything at the event were all of these products that they announced. Not only is there a uh, not only are there going to be new designs and refreshes for the Echo Dot and the Echo Plus, and also the Echo Show, which now has a 10-inch display, um, two-inch drivers for uh, better audio, a five-megapixel camera, um, and integrations with more uh, services like Hulu and NBC. Um, there are also a lot of these other products that they're bringing out um, that are supposed to be considered either Amazon Basics or even more connected to the uh, to the Echo. Um, ecosystem mm -hmm. so one thing that i thought was pretty cool was the echo wall clock yeah, I that's that was cool. cool. <laughs> it's a good looking clock right and it's only 30 really bucks nice. yeah yeah like i'm trying to remember who it was was it was it the verge that said uh amazon's trying to be like ikea now and i was like that's kind of i like that i like that <laughs> that comparison <laughs> because now you also have um you even have this uh, car plug-in uh, that is the Echo Auto. Uh, it's going to be this new thing that you put on your dash, and it just kind of connects to your to your car. Um, and you know, the, would you want to have Alexa in your car as compared to like Android Auto? Or I know CarPlay is terrible. <laughs> I love an Android Auto. By yeah, the way. Android Auto is like, great. I I love that thing to death. It is just so cool. I feel the that, user interface is probably the best. Yeah. 
I, that's not that's one thing I'm really not looking forward to when I get my iPhone is connecting it to my car because CarPlay is just horrendous. But that's the reason why I carry two phones like, you know, and, and the cool thing is the you know, the dashboard of my car accepts both either CarPlay or yeah. Android Auto. So exactly. for me, that's that's perfect. My, so um, where do you? Oh, sorry. Go over it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say I, I thought the uh, Alexa thing for the car was a great opportunity, except that you have to connect it to your phone and connect your phone to the car for it to work properly. I thought they were going to do an, like an LTE modem inside of that car thing. That would be mm. really cool. Is anyone on this panel an avid Alexa user? No. Oh, me. I, I have one in every single room. I use it so much. It's crazy. <laughs> what? So, just... and what do you use it for? Order diapers for this, order diapers for that. <laughs> oh my God. I use it for everything. Um, it's just so many things. I use it to find out what the commute is to work because it knows where I work. I use it to turn on and off the TV because I have one of those Logitech smart remotes because my kids always forget oh. to turn off the TV. Um, I use it to turn on and on, on and off lights. I can use it to lock and unlock my front door. Um, I, of course, I use it for the weather, for questions. Um, I have uh, Nest cameras all over the place so I can say, Alexa, show me the front door camera. Um, should I keep going? I use it for everything. Like so much. Well, now, well, now you're going to be able to use it for even more things because Amazon has also brought an Amazon Basics smart plug. So if you've been using like TP-Link or LifeX, or what are the other ones? Um, Belkin, the Wemo. There you go, the Wemo yeah. ones. Like there's a bunch of smart plugs out there, and this one is priced pretty similarly at only twenty five dollars. So it's not. Okay. I mean, if if you're an Alexa person, then cool. I, that would be totally. So my biggest problem with adopting like smart lights and everything is just how much do you want for the damn light bulb thing? Like what? <laughs> and it's, 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 like, a closed, it's a closed ecosystem. So if Philips stops updating the Hue firmware, your lights don't work and you just spent $500 on light bulbs. Exactly. Yeah. I just, I, um, I'm sorry, you know, dear companies. I, you know, and it's funny because I know that I can reach out to certain companies and I can get these things for free. But, you know, just from the consumer standpoint, these are all really cool ideas that are just too expensive. Just too much money, guys. Like, really? It's like, a, I think it was like $80 for like a socket. To, to for one light bulb i'm like no no well before we before we move on uh, i wanted to end with a hot take on the microwave so do you guys have <laughs> you can wake up in the morning and say alexa good morning and then it will start heating up your pre-made coffee which will probably taste terrible reheated <laughs> anybody got more microwave stories okay so the microwave the microwave thing is so stupid and it's very clear what amazon's trying to do here's, Wait, why, it's, do? <laughs> here's why it's stupid listen the the microwave doesn't have Alexa built in. It's just has a Wi-Fi chip. So you have right. to you have to say Alexa, turn on the microwave to heat my coffee. Guess what's faster? You roll up to your microwave, you press one or two for one minute or two minutes, and you <laughs> you, you know exactly what's going to happen after this. They're going to start putting Alexa in multiple appliances so that you can talk to your Echo to do certain things on your appliances. It's but just the but the question is, can you do it from your bedroom to the coffee machine that's downstairs in the kitchen? I don't know of any coffee maker that will turn on. I mean, I well, guess that's you, what the smart plug is for. Yeah, but like if you turn it on, like you still have to press the button. Yeah, you it. have to go control and say what you want. Yeah, exactly. It just doesn't. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So you're t wait a second. So you're telling me that Alexa is not going to put your coffee or whatever it is that you're going to heat in the microwave? It's not going to. It has to be in there already. <laughs> You have to prepare. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. And Jules, right. and Jules is, is saying in our chat, can Alexa bring you your coffee? No, it can't. <laughs> <laughs> so who cares? One day. You're right. It's it is kind of dumb, but it is the beginning of what could be a pretty a pretty big Amazon Basics ecosystem. So as far as my office is mostly IKEA. If that can become IKEA Good plus part. Amazon, I'm okay well, with that. Like if they can if they can make the ecosystem actually work well then that's all i'm saying um speaking of uh speaking of bigger ecosystems apparently oneplus is looking to expand out of uh smartphones now they have a bunch of other things as well uh but when i first was working with oneplus uh with the oneplus 2 i believe they did say that they wanted to be a lifestyle brand in the long term so they gave me a bunch of like desk organizers with the OnePlus logo on it and like the backpacks. Everyone works the backpacks in the tech industry. Um, so there's definitely this push. Now there's going to be a much bigger push because they want to go into the home as OnePlus is looking to launch something called the OnePlus TV. Uh, so, but, but I'm confused. Like, what is it? Like, is it television like Leico or a television <laughs> with a television service like Leico? Don't, don't jinx OnePlus with the term Leico, please. <laughs> 
um, but yes, they are looking to expand into the home because as far as their they are concerned, um, let me look up the uh, quote real quick. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. For most of us, there are four major environments we experience every single day. The home, the workplace, the commute, and being on the move. The home, perhaps the most important environment experience, is starting to enjoy the benefits of intelligent connectivity. That's exactly what they are looking to add to with that. So with the OnePlus TV, they're trying to bring the best of all worlds. The TV having seamless connectivity between your smartphone and itself, and also having AI smarts. <laughs> I love that they use AI smarts. Um, the type of AI smarts. Just, and Just throw that in there. Everything's, yeah, everything's exactly. AI smarts. The smarts, yeah. Um, here's my my hot take on this. It's quite simple. Oxygen OS on an Android enabled television, win win. Oxygen OS is the cleanest Android interface. Still makes the One Plus Six one of the most enjoyable phones to use, I and I would love to see that on on an, on a One Plus TV. But Android TV is super clean, especially like on an Nvidia Shield where it's super fast. Have you used that? It's just so oh, clean. Yeah. I have a Shield TV, and I agree with you there. Uh, but it, it's great to see that, and then OnePlus bring oxygen to the TV. I, I just, you know, it's a win-win. So I, I, I like that a lot, honestly. I hope that doesn't take away resources from their phones, because I love their phones, and it would be really a shame if they put all of their time and effort into the TV, which is going to take a lot of research and development and product development, and they kind of neglected their phones a little bit. That would be I, awesome. I don't know. put an in-display fingerprint reader on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it just me, or can I can I consider the fact that OnePlus? There there are a lot of things that OnePlus admires about Apple, and they've been they've been clear about it. They've expressed it at their events. But I think that one of the things that I love the most about OnePlus that they follow from Apple is that they behave like a startup. Mm -hmm. They start something, they perfect it, they get really good at it, they then know. they move into something else. And so I I love that about OnePlus. I love that they continuously refine and refine and refine but they keep it simple as far as possible they tried a second phone with the with the oppo uh oppo sorry the, the oneplus x uh then then they were like no that wasn't a good idea and they you know they stuck to just one thing and so they've been evolving into other things like and have you used their merch by the way like their backpacks and yeah. they're so good they're so they're good, so totally. good. I, i'm like all right like their notepads are i use them you know, mm -hmm. and so I think that it's um, I think that I, I wouldn't mind one plus to experiment with something like televisions. I mean, we've got TCL. Uh, we've got so many companies. Why not? Like, uh, I think that they if, so long as they right now they're doing phones and they've come to the point where their phones are popular. And so they're just moving into other ecosystems, but yeah. slowly one by one. I think that that is genius. I love that they haven't come up with the OnePlus watch, for example. I wouldn't care. Like, <laughs> I, I think, you know, I, I think that they they're they're focusing on things that are actually like TV, the TV business is booming. Like mm -hmm. obviously 8K is is the thing now. 8K? Whatever, that, I mean, is. whatever that is. Whatever that is, you know. Okay. 8K is the new <laughs> thing. So they're probably gonna jump into 4K and just come up with like a really affordable 4K TV. Like if they come up with something like that and battle TCL, I think that that's a good thing. And you, you've got TCL that are now using their own panels from the technology that they learned from TCL into their phones. And so why not OnePlus? I mean, I think that there are a lot of synergies here. Yes. And I'm trying to look for uh, G Bavzar in our chat. Um, OnePlus probably saw what Xiaomi did with TVs in India. The Xiaomi Mi TV 4 killed it with competitive pricing. And if there's one thing we know about OnePlus is that when they start something new, it's usually pretty competitively priced because they're going to build it from that starting point. Right. I mean, obviously, the OnePlus phones have become more expensive, but they've also become better. So that's, that, and, that, that's a and, distinction But that's the thing. I mean, you know, I do know that the OnePlus phones have become more expensive, I just, you know, I think that the value has grown uh, matched by the quality of their products. Like if you grab the OnePlus 2, which I have in a drawer, I never had the OnePlus 1. But if you compare the OnePlus 2 to the OnePlus 6, for example, you're like, yeah, you can totally tell the difference in price here. And then, you know, from the performance standpoint, like the cameras on OnePlus phones before that were crappy. Yeah. Uh, now I, you know, I did a comparison between the OnePlus 6 and the iPhone 10, shameless plug. And, you know, I, I was <laughs> like, you're not getting $500 more of a phone with the iPhone 10. Totally. Indeed. You know? Indeed. Yes. Uh, I mentioned Xiaomi, which brings us to our uh, final story in this first segment. Um, how cheap should a phone be so that you can accept that there are ads 
all over the place. I'm I'm actually that's the name of the article. That's the the, the headline. Okay. But I'm actually asking you guys. <laughs> okay. Can I can I defend Xiaomi on this one? Ah, how so? Do you know how Xiaomi makes money through their software? Yes. So what's the problem when your software is no longer controlled by Xiaomi completely, which is the thing, you know, for the company to move away from China, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult. Think about it. If, if once the company moves away from China, they don't control the store. They don't control a lot of the things where they, where they're able to monetize in order to be able to sell people an affordable product. And so I don't mind one banner ad drink in the settings if that's going to allow them to sell me the Mi Mix 2S for 450 500 bucks. True. I don't care. Just ignore Which it. is, I, I was completely against this by HTC. If you remember, HTC was the first one to come up with their whole, we're going to serve you, you know, In the ads on your chain. Uh, Yeah, which was, I'm like, okay, how much, are, how much of a discount are you giving me on the phone for that? Because Xiaomi does give you an a it's, it's a five percent margin over a phone. Nobody does five percent margins over a phone, and so that's literally what's made Xiaomi so popular. I don't mind it so long as they keep the prices where they have. I mean, look at the Poco phone, guys. That's yeah. crazy. I'm trying to <laughs> look at the Poco phone. It's just so hard without LTE. Anyway, that's always going to be my gripe with that phone. Uh, but when, as far as uh, Xiaomi is concerned. Um, I don't know, like, because what you're looking at is a, is a bigger ecosystem picture. If a if a cheaper phone with ads allows them to cut overhead, um, and then they're able to make their premium phones for a much lower price as a result, that's okay. I can get that. But how low does the phone itself that has the ad have to be? One ninety nine, two ninety nine. I think under one fifty or one hundred would be. So an Android One device with ads. Which is kind of against the whole idea of Android One. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know. I mean, there's this very interesting video, by the way. I've become a really big fan of uh, of a channel called Tech Alter. Uh, the guy makes these like amazing case studies of like why this company does this or why this company does that. I think we should definitely link to him. Uh, I'll, I'll do yeah. so once this video goes live because there's like a very complete study over why. Like, I, I can explain it to you, but he mm -hmm. has a full nine minute video over. How Xiaomi and why the why they're now doing Poco Phone and why this whole change in strategy and the rebranding, etc. And again, uh, Mark, like, that's his name, Martin. Exactly. I mean, dude, yeah. he does some really awesome videos. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's like these are business models. I, you know, what do you want? Would you rather? I, I don't know of anything. Like, if you buy the New York Times, you can buy the New York Times now for like a dollar a week or something stupid like that. But obviously, for, for the New York Times, the price of the product, the paper, is really just distribution, probably. For them, really, they make more money off the ads, and that's just the way it is. We've been, we've been served ads on the street in banners. We've been served ads on just about everywhere in the world. I mean, we survive out of ads when it comes to YouTube, et cetera. And so, again, if they price the phone aggressively, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, Amazon's been doing it not well with those uh, ads at the beginning of their of the phones that they serve. Well, real quick, uh, Jules did just make a good uh, a good point in the chat that um, the difference between Xiaomi and Amazon is that Amazon is very upfront with their ads. Yeah, you turn on a Kindle and it's like, hey, this is the version of the Kindle you no, buy. And, and when you pay for it, when you pay <laughs> for it, they, they actually ask you, do you want the version with ads or the version without ads? Yeah. You want the version without ads, you pay an extra thirty bucks. I think Xiaomi should probably do that. That's a good point. All right. Um, so that that is our new segment for today. Um, as the landline is going off in my music. I apologize, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. So um, apparently Brandon had some stuff he wanted to do in our check in. Um, I will say one quick thing uh, that uh, I was on a little you, you may not have known this uh, viewers and listeners, but I was on a little bit of a vacation. But we were able to get uh, what we internally called the monthly done where we had a great show with uh, a returning Michael Fisher. And awesome. tech me out and Danny wing it or winge it rather. Um, I mean, he, he's okay with either pronunciation, but that was a great show. And I hope everyone enjoyed that one. Uh, make sure you check that out on the YouTube channel, of course. Uh, but yeah, um, I was able to use the Pocophone out in Cabo and 
it's it kind of got LTE. Like it got it got it got really great HSPA plus. Let me just say that. <laughs> so Latin America has got great HSPA plus. Like yeah. it's hilarious how here in in the United States they're like LTE or 4G, and like the fallout to four to HSPA plus is terrible. It's like worse than 2G here. Oh man. Yeah, it was it was kind of nice using it out there, and I did use it for a few shots. I am finally putting together my final review of it. Um, I'd be more than happy to share my camera samples, by the way, with you guys. And um, uh, yeah, I I spent some time in Cabo. I was up late the day that the iPhone went uh, uh, on sale for pre-order, <laughs> so I have a bit of a story about that. But I can talk about that a little bit later in our iPhone segment. Um, Jaime is uh, leaving for just a minute, so Brandon, why don't you let us know what your thought thread is all about? Well, it's kind of a mini discussion, so I kind of want to wait till Jaime comes back. Um, oh, okay. Uh, well, then why don't you just let us know? Um, well, you were you, you okay? So first of all, there was a show that we did a couple weeks ago where you said you were off that day, but you were all, you were still in the chat. <laughs> were you like? Were you not off that day? What was going on? <laughs> um, yeah, I had something I had to do, but uh, I wanted to check in and see what you guys were talking about. So I just, <laughs> I just jumped in for like 10 minutes just to kind of stalk you guys and see what you were talking about. Yeah, Jules and I were laughing when we saw that you like appeared in the in the live chat. We're just like, Brandon, I thought you were off today. What's going on over here, man? <laughs> there he is. Hey, Jaime's back, so I can... Uh... All right, let's go. Ahead. Sorry, let's go that. for it. Need a need a spare battery because I'm actually. You guys, we're working. Like I'm I'm working on clips right now as we film because we've got <laughs> so little time. Yeah. All right. Go so it. go for it, brother. Okay. So I just want to go back in time a little bit uh, to the Nexus Five. Uh, the Nexus Five had a five-inch screen, which is actually pretty big for the time. And then the Nexus Six came out, which had a six-inch screen. And I remember watching one of the early reviews. Uh, Dieter Bone made the review for the Verge, and he said. The following he said i'm calling it phones are not going to get bigger than six inch this has become absurd okay so <laughs> fast forward 2018 the oneplus 6 was 6.3 inch the note 4 was 6.4 inches the iphone 10s max is 6.5 inches the vivo next is 6.6 inches and then there's a little phone that came out recently uh called the honor note 10 which um, TK reviewed over on his channel. Oh my God. The TK showed me that phone. Go Honor for Note it. Note 10 has a 6.9 inch screen. And I'm thinking, wait a sec, wait a sec. It wasn't that long ago that the Nexus 7 came out, which was a tablet that you held in your hands. How is it possible that a phone can have a 6.9 inch screen and still be considered a phone? And that got me thinking. And what I want to ask you guys is, you know, 2018 was the year of the six plus inch phone. Um, with, but they had kind of smaller footprints because we got notches and small bezels. Do you guys think next year is going to be the year of the high six inch, low seven inch phones, or is it just, are we done here with the size increases? Well, I mean, we'll bring, bring up your 10 S max again on camera. Oh, what the hell, that. man? I'm oh, sorry. Hold on. I got to clear out my notifications because I've got secret messages that you guys can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Look so. at that thing. No, it's not that. It's not. It doesn't have a bigger that, footprint than the that, Note Nine. I know, but it still looks big. I I don't know. Like the screen is a little deceiving in that regard. I, I will. No. Admit. Uh, all right. So I'm going to say this. You we have to remember what happened last year. Uh, last year, when was it the LG G6 announced? Last year, mm, two years ago, wasn't it? No, oh, last year. So, you're right, you're so right. remember what changed. Like the the length of the display hasn't has increased but also the form factor. So 16 by nine. So the biggest problem with the Nexus 6 was a six inch display and a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Sure. It made it a wide phone. It's super wide, yeah. <clears throat> so the, the genius move uh, last year was, oh, we're gonna offer you larger screens, but these weren't really larger screens. If we, if we do the math and you know, how much a a space area there is, the screens haven't really gotten that much bigger. They're it's taller. just, you know, they're taller, 18 by 9, 18 point, like the iPhone is like, what, 19.5 by 9? And so it's just this little trick that they're doing. And also, uh, they're also playing with things like the notch, where they're telling you, which I'm not going to blame Apple for using the notch, because forever Google would be like, yeah, we're offering you a 6.3 inch display, but then the control buttons at the bottom would pretty much take up part of it anyways. You know, so... It's this little play that companies have been doing. So if you grab a Nexus 7, and I have one, by the way, I could bring it. Oh, I could bring it <laughs> next week that we meet. Like, I have a Nexus 7. If you compare that 7-inch with the Honor Note, whatever, no, um, no. <laughs> the, you, you really won't see two devices that are the same size. 
one, two, bezels have changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. Dramatically. Like if you even if you grab the iPhone 8, I mean, just grab your iPhone 8 Plus and compare it to the iPhone 10 10 as uh, maxi pad. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> the tennis uh, max. Uh, <laughs> the what? The tennis max. Did you see my tweet last week? The tennis air max. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God, oh, it's no. it's it's the worst. But no, it's uh you know companies are playing with uh oh we're offering you a larger display. Like if you notice the Note Eight, the Note Nine, what did they do? It's literally the same footprint of the Note Eight, and they just added an extra millimeter, an extra point something inch uh, to the bottom bezel and made it asymmetrical. And they just they're just reducing bezels. They continuously reduce bezels. If, if Sony could just get out of its own way for a second, I think twenty nineteen should mark the return of the Z Ultra. <laughs> Lord. Oh, that Bam. Was so big. <laughs> it's just all screen. <laughs> it was Bam, awesome. Like Such that. a nice phone. Oh so, man, that'd be great. I, you know, I think it's a I think that the phone that does it best that sadly I don't have here amongst all this mess is the Oppo Find X. That is I I have to finish I have to finish that review. I've been working on it. Um, on. um uh, oh, they keep talking, sorry. I the Oppo gonna... Find X for me is honestly the best cuz it's literally a full symmetrical bezel all around, just display with curves and feels small in the hand and it's freaking gorgeous and it's OLED. And oh my God, I want more phones like this if they could figure out how that mechanism is not gonna, gonna get as much lint as mine gets. Can you can you bring it next week when you come visit? Actually, yeah. right here, Issa has hers and I've been meaning to to play around with it myself. Oh, cool. There you go. Those look pretty dope. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of good. Dude, it's a beautiful phone, dude. It is such a beautiful phone. Like Issa so just said, the screen's amazing. My my conclusion on the review, just the, you know, the the script and everything, uh, and I've also, I've already recorded my Aero, but my conclusion is this. Like, the Oppo Find this is like a Lamborghini and I love that they created the Lamborghini edition because it pretty much is this. It's, a beautiful product to be admired. It is a beautiful product to drive and use so long as you don't bring it to Braddock Avenue here in close to Long Island in Queens Village. Because you're going to destroy the suspension of that Lamborghini if you bring it over here. And so that's the same thing with the Find X. It's not the most durable phone. It's not for everybody. But so is a Ferrari not for everybody. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's not for, right. like, and that's the thing. You won't be able to, like, you won't be able to use it like you, like you use a Honda Accord or you use an SUV. It just wasn't designed for that. And so the Find X is that. It's bragging rights. Is instead of buying that horrible, like, horribly expensive Virtue phone, buy a Find X. Like, mm -hmm. that is more bragging rights than anything. But you won't Fair. be able to take it into the pool. You won't be able to. But so won't you be able to drive that Lamborghini in certain in certain roads in it's the pool the or in? <laughs> it's the same concept. Yeah. Uh, um, you, you made some good points, Jaime, about how manufacturers have done certain things to bring down the size of a phone, but make the screen bigger. Josh, yeah. I'm curious what you think. If you think that we're going to be seeing a push towards seven inch plus phones next year or anytime. I, I would say why not? And um, let, let's see how they skirt all of this, uh, all, all of this uh, quote unquote wasted space that might be, uh, that might uh, occur because someone in our chat, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember your name. I got to look back on it. Uh, it. It got buried under all the other comments uh, said that, Yes, the the screens are taller, like Jaime said, and then when you watch in landscape, there's the there's the um, what do they call that? The pillar boxing. So is that a waste of space? It, it kind of is. Like it, it kind Listen, of is. Listen, I, I mean, come on. It, the, please don't tell me that you didn't survive at a time when televisions were making the move from si from four by oh, three no, to sixteen by nine. I totally agree. But if it's, you're going to have pillar boxing on a on a phone that is over seven inches large, like that's kind of annoying. It's it kind is of annoying. kind of annoying, and I get the point. And I, I I find it hilarious whenever I get comments of like, when are we going to make the move to eighteen by nine video? And I'm like, shoot, like not even camera sensors exactly aren't designed in that in that symmetry yet. If I want to provide, if I want to use the full sensor, I need to film in sixteen by nine one and two. Have you ever seen the pillar boxing on an iPad, which is what a lot of people use to consume content, particularly on airplanes? Like everybody's using iPads or yeah. you know tablets that are sixteen by nine, and so. Why do I want to create that pillar boxing? I would rather figure out a, fr a way to frame myself. And if you want to see full screen, just zoom in, dude. I mean, you've got the option.
Yeah, it's it's it's, it's there, and then you it, there are compromises is what I'm saying. So pillow boxing is one, and then like, when you zoom like, in, you cut yeah. the top and bottom off. Like it's it's kind of dumb, and there's still some content out there that I do consume that's four by three. Yeah, <laughs> so there you I go. I like watching and classic TV sometimes. So there you go. And so here's the thing: this is like the dongle life that we're living. Where I have my microphone connected to this laptop using uh, an adapter from Samsung because it doesn't have USB A, and there will be a time when this microphone will ship with a USB C connector. Try to yeah. find a try to find a mini, not micro, mini USB cable to USB C. They don't exist. They don't. Yeah, they don't not exist. Yeah, you know. All right. So uh, speaking of our uh, speaking of our pillar boxing, um, Brandon. Now that we're getting into it, um, you guys both unboxed your phones already, though, huh? So there's not really much to show. Like, can we? Can we? Can Can you guys comment on one thing for me? Because I'm I know I'm going to throw the box at the wall when I see this in person. Because I know this is the case. There's no adapter for a headphone, right? Nope. What the heck? Like, use your AirPods. That's use the your problem. AirPods. Come on, you got That's them. What you they want. Okay, first of all, I am the truly wireless earbud advocate. I agree, but what? I I don't know. This still pisses me off. I don't know why. <laughs> I you know to be fully honest with you, I'm not like because first of all, to be fully honest with you, I never used that dongle. Like I gave him away to my son because he likes to use wired headphones. Mm -hmm. He's a smart kid, uh, but uh, I I don't like. Uh, for me, it's it's been I've been using Bluetooth for the past six years. Yeah, uh, you know, and it's funny. Like I I will use this just because it connects to the microphone and I'm able to monitor the audio. But in absolutely everything else, if AirPods had a better design, I would use AirPods. Like why not? I just I feel that they've brought in so much convenience and just how easy it is to put them to to put them on, take them off and how they can connect to every single one of your Apple products so seamlessly. I feel that it's a genius move. It's just a terrible design, but I feel that that's just, we need to embrace it now. Hey, just mm. because your ears don't work with AirPods doesn't mean it's a terrible design. I don't, I totally agree <laughs> that my ears have not shrunk over the last couple of years, sadly. I, I was expecting that to happen. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's it. It is where it's going, yeah. Brandon, when was the last time you unboxed an iPhone? It's been a very long time. Well, 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 do you remember which phone that was? Um, maybe the five S. Maybe. Oh my um, goodness! It's been a long time. So we're ten. We're ten generations in on the iPhone, and uh, you can you can share whatever your experiences are on unboxing this particular device. Does it still have the magic it used to have? Because I've never unboxed an iPhone. Not 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 with the grandeur that it used to have. You know, because the iPhone is the phone that everyone was like the plastic peel and all that. I feel um, it's. I feel it's. Do you guys remember unboxing HTC products? Oh, not so recently. Not recently. Uh, but I'm talking from the Pocket PC days, and probably up until the last uh, Windows Mobile devices, right before they made the change to Android. Their boxes were awesome, and and there was a time when HTC made Palm Palm devices, right? Uh, uh yes. yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you remember those box designs and just the whole unboxing experience? Oh, it was stunning. It was awesome. It, so really I felt special. Yeah. So for me, uh, and by the way, my my unboxing should be live soon. I'm still putting together a couple of clips, but uh, honestly, like the iPhone experience unboxing is as with the first iPhone. It's just a small box with everything. The unboxing experience that I really liked this time was the Apple Watch. <laughs> well, what was it about the Apple Watch? So I already dropped it, and uh, oh, no. because of the way the box is now, so the box is this is this compartment, and the watch oh. doesn't come with the band. The watch doesn't come with the bands anymore, wow. and so it's the the just the the piece of the watch is in here. The bands are separate, and then so it's funny. The moment that I lifted it on video, boom, the watch fell. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> But it's just the way they put it together, where the watch band is here, and then they've got of an these... elaborate, yeah, package. Yeah. yeah, no, dude, this is like, and I there's a piece of the package down there that I, I can't reach for right now, but it's got like, hold on, let me try to get it. Uh, it's got like different designs of Apple watches and just different options, and I feel that they did that really well. It reminds me of the old times with HTC devices, where you had an accessory for everything. And it it just the the box just the quality of the box everything felt really good. Ah, okay. I think the best iPhone unboxings I can remember were the ones where like the form factor had changed. Like I remember go unboxing the five. And it here, was look at this. 
Oh, wow. That's this. so pretty. That's so cool. That is kind of cool. Yeah. That is like so that. cool. And just the way you unwrap the box. So these are like little tabs at the bottom like this. Mm -hmm. And then you snap, snap. And then you start unpeeling this. That's and then cool. once you peel it off, there's another inner box. That's so HTC, man. That oh, okay. Is so HTC. I like, I like that you I like that you you ended it with that was so HTC because there are a lot Dude. of people one thing that I always found incredulous about Apple fans is that they the, those tiny little details they would go nuts over and I'm like it's you I don't know this is such an Apple way of talking. <laughs> Dude, but but it's it's just you you know that HTC and Apple collaborated for a few years. Yes, yes. Uh, particularly at the time of the iPhone 6 between the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 6 they collaborated a lot. Um, from the design of the antenna built into the aluminum and everything. That's all an HTC design, by the way. Mm. Um, and so, you know, it's one of those things where I love a company that has attention to detail in things like the packaging. I do praise it because you're not paying three bucks for these things. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so while we, while we are chiming in a little bit about our unboxing, uh, situations and whatnot, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do one when my phone comes in in the next hour or so, but, but oh, you everyone haven't doing it. Yet. No, it's not. It hasn't arrived yet. What? I'm on the west. I'm on the west coast. It's already like behind. three. Yeah, it's three three p.m. for you guys already. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's all. It's all good. Um, I will. I don't know if I'll. Maybe I'll do something on IG Live or something like that. Who's who knows? Uh, but we do have a little bit of news about the iPhone 10 as we're talking about the unboxing experience and all that stuff. Um, so the suppliers of the iPhone that make that basically manufacture the physical parts for it that include the company uh, Foxconn. They're a little bit worried about the high prices of the iPhone because, well, everyone makes the speculation that how much is a phone like this truly worth uh, when there's a ton of overhead on top of it? Because obviously these phones are very expensive. And here's where I'm going to bring in my story. Um, <laughs> I, I stayed up late until 1 or 2 a.m. to pre-order the 10s Max. And after all the horror stories that I heard about pre-ordering and how tough it is to do so, I had the easiest I had the easiest time just doing it. I just I just got in, I hit I want the gold one, 64 gigabyte. I'm not gonna fill it up too crazy anyway. Um and then boom, I, I bought it. You know I was not is? why was that? It oh that's that's because people aren't like pre-ordering in the droves that they used to. So like, yeah, you can go through Apple system and there's like less congestion. You can get your order through boom. It ships uh, when everyone else gets it and there's no congestion. Yeah. And but wait, but wait a second. Did, didn't we have news um, where uh, Apple had like hijacked, I don't know how many cargo planes uh, and just placed an order like really in advance. Like for example, my iPhone shipped from Connecticut. It didn't ship from Shenzhen. No, oh, mine did. <laughs> yeah. And Same. so I feel, you know, the one thing that Tim Cook is really good at is distribution, man. I mean, I feel that uh, they were, if you remember, they got like a really, it's not that they got scolded by the board, but they were like, you know, we need to figure this out, this whole, we don't make enough phones for the demand. Like, it, it doesn't really matter how many phones you can manufacture at the beginning. Um, eventually, they'll, they will sell. Like, people will end up buying them at some point in the case of iPhones. And so I don't think, you know, Foxconn made the comment and it's, you know, it's, it's understandable, but uh, a lot of people were making comments. Oh, there are not so many lines right now in front of the Apple store. It doesn't go around the block. I think it's just because people are getting smarter about ordering. Perhaps so. Um, but I was in a room. I have, I, it was a family vacation. So I had my parents and my girlfriend and my brother, his girlfriend. Uh, my brother's girlfriend is a huge Apple fan. And I, I guess you could say my girlfriend is a somewhat former Apple fan. Is that Okay, she she was excited. Well, this is the point I was going to make. Everyone in the room was excited but me. <laughs> and the reason why is because of that price tag. It was twelve hundred dollars down the drain in less than five clicks. Yeah. Crazy. I had the in same less thought. than five clicks. Uh, <laughs> buddy, but but like for example, my my uh, so the UPS driver is like my buddy. <laughs> and so his name is James, by the way. And so James walks in, and I'm like, dude, I've been waiting for you for a bit. I'm like, he's like. He's like, dude, I'm here early. He was here like at like 10 minutes before 10. He's always here at 10 a.m. And the guy was like, and, you know, and, I'm, and he's like, and I know what you're waiting for. I've got 387 more packages to deliver. And I just delivered another 50 before I got here. Mm. So do the math. How yeah. many iPhones is one UPS truck delivering? That's a very expensive truck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just one UPS truck. Just do the math, dude. It's, yeah, it's, that's a ton. It's five hundred phones for one one driver. Yeah. Shoot. 
She's like, dude, it's going to be crazy today. So, hey. yeah. And it did look like it. A lot of our friends are, or a lot of our friends went to Apple stores and it did look like it was kind of, it was, it, it's not quite the madhouse it used to be, but it's still a madhouse. Um, so to sort of quell these uh, different speculations about how expensive the phone is and why it's so expensive and whether or not the suppliers are kind of uh, feeling the, 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 the penny pinch a little bit, uh, Tim Cook uh, did do an interview on Good Morning America, basically stating why the iPhone XS is priced the way that it is. And there were a couple of really interesting like takes that he made on it. Um, so when you think about it, I'll just, I'll, you know what, I'll just read the way that. Uh, yeah, put. I didn't see the interview. Tell me. Yeah, so well, this is what this is what uh, this is what he ended up saying. Basically, we want to make an iPhone for everyone. That's always been our objective, and we've got several iPhones in line. And the prices go down to um, materially low. I'm going to skip that part. But the way for most people with these, as it turns out, is they do a deal with a carrier and they pay so much per month. So if you look at even the phone that's priced over a thousand dollars, most people are paying thirty dollars a month for it. That's just a dollar a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's no, just so, one cent a minute. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So uh, David Kogan made like the perfect analogy. He's like, why am I going to order the iPhone last year? Why am I going to order order the iPhone 8 or 8 Plus and not the iPhone 10? It's just $6 more a month. Oh, jeez. Uh, those comparisons, dude, no, no, oh, that, no, that no, stacks up, though. <laughs> no, but he, he was like, dude, I drink $6 a month. Uh, $6 in, in just the amount of coffee drink every day. Yeah. He made the analogy compared to a Starbucks latte. He's like, I drink two a day. That's six bucks right there. You're there, telling Jules, me for six... You see, see Jules, Jules just brought it in right there. See, it's it's that plus car payments, mortgages, <laughs> plus all of these no, other no. things. And, and now, now I get it. And for me, so my count argument was like, all right, so we live in a, in a world where all companies want to make some money out of this. Like... We, like uh, if you want to use Adobe tools, that's a that's like yeah. like like sixty bucks a month. Uh, if you want to use Microsoft tools, that's like twelve dollars a month. And then you've got Netflix for another eleven. Then you've got Hulu for nine. And then you've got Apple. So you've got Spotify for ten bucks. And once you do the math, yes, you're gonna end up with like a two hundred dollar bill just in subscriptions. And then add you know the the extra six bucks for your iPhone. But you know what? That's what that's you know this is the system. It and is the know, way we are right now. And you know what the problem is josh i wish that there uh so i remember when htc came up with the with the m7 the, you know and they were like four megapixels is all people need and four megapixels is it and the phone was a huge it's, it wasn't a flop but it, it didn't sell well because you can't just tell people that you're gonna reduce technology and charge them more and people are gonna be fine with it the problem with iphones you know what it is that people still buy them yeah, that's the problem. That's, that's the, there was a let me find that comment real quick. Someone was in the live chat with this. Uh, DBS said, "Oh my goodness, it's going to take a while." You guys are very active in the in the chat today, <laughs> which is great. Thank you so much. But it was it was some sort of uh, it was some sort of comment about Virtu, how Virtu would make fifteen hundred dollar phones, and then they ended up going bankrupt. That's not going to happen with Apple. No, simply no. put. Yeah. Um, but I guess I guess there is still the argument though that you know for the average person, as Jules was trying to say in our chat here, the for the average person, this is still a lot to ask. You know, and, is, and it, yeah, it it is, it is, and people just don't end up buying them. But hold on, you made a good point right now. So remember the thing that we were talking about, Xiaomi, with the ads on the on their settings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Apple controls their app store just like Xiaomi controls the app store in China. Apple makes thirty percent off of every transaction in their app store their music store their movie store their everything that's the reason why they're so wealthy and this is the reason why xiaomi's made sense so yes the no apple's not going to go bankrupt mainly because of how much they how many services revolve around iphones and how they create this walled garden that they actually make aspirational with all their advertisement and the fact that people still buy them that you know, yeah. Yeah. you know whose fault it is? It you your your fault because that the <laughs> iPhone is over thirteen hundred dollars. Here's why: it's simple economics. Things are worth what people will pay for them, and as yeah. long as you guys keep spending twelve and thirteen hundred dollars on your phones, Apple's going to be able to charge it because the market says you are the market that, and everyone listening, they say that's okay. I'll spend a mortgage payment on a freaking phone. I would have loved. I would have loved when the iPhone 10 came out and for the quarter results to be like, yeah, no, we've we've had our first decline since <laughs> since the iPhone success. Yeah, definitely. And then boom, we're going to price it more aggressively. 
you know, I wish that would have happened. That actually did. It, so Apple did sell like crazy when it came to the the first iPhone. And even then, if you remember, it was five hundred dollars plus the plan in AT and T yeah. with the first iPhone. Then came the iPhone three G. And instead of going five hundred dollars, it was two hundred. Like they dropped three hundred dollars, even if they sold well with the first iPhone. So I, I was waiting. I was waiting for that to happen with the iPhone ten S. Be like, all right, we already paid for all the R and D with the iPhone ten. We've already done this. Now we're going to drop the price. No, because people went crazy and bought the i. Like I have, n I have rarely seen people with an iPhone eight plus or an iPhone eight. Everybody has a ten. Well, everybody the, has a 10. You know what? You touch upon something that uh, is our, it's kind of our next topic here, like upgrading from an iPhone 10 to a 10s or a 10s Max. Oh. Does it for for you who have? Blah, 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 sorry, I'm getting tongue tied. For you right now, Jaime, who has the 10s and now the 10. So that 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 is like. Does that feel like a lateral move to you, or is it is it actually an upgrade that you're willing to make if if you were not who you are? <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fully honest, the only reason why I went for gold was because I couldn't tell people that I was reviewing the 10s if uh -huh. if I oh, chose the space God. gray that I prefer. And it's this nice. is the only reason I chose gold. I actually don't like the color because like your your finger smudges make the stainless steel look darker, mm. uh, which is one of the reasons why I like the space gray. I feel that it aged better. Uh, I, dude, like uh, I don't think that this phone has. I'm probably biased. I need to start using it uh, to to be able to give you like a full opinion. But like, there's really no reason to upgrade so far. The only the only reason for me would be the camera on the iPhone 10 was not good. It was yeah. decent. It was not good. So if I go out and I start taking photos and this fo phone impresses me, then I'll be like, all right, fine. I get it. There are some people on social right now who are saying that Smart HDR seems to be doing a pretty good job. Everybody's like, oh, the camera's dramatically better. A it's lot really, of the, it's the, really scary. Yeah, but, but, but these are the same people that in the review were like, oh, the camera on the iPhone 10 is great. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Compared to what? Like, it's great compared to what? The iPhone 7. <laughs> no, even, the, I don't know, man. Like, like, dynamic range on the iPhone 10 is just bad. Well, hopefully it's, smart HDR bad. is doing it. So, like, there are some examples out there that look like they're, you know, it's doing it's doing a job. I'm not gonna say it's doing the job, but it's because it's doing a job. Um, as far as video goes, that's gonna be where I am going to be very scrutinizing about. Um, just a, a small, slightly selfish plug. Um, uh, John M. Chu, who is the director of Crazy Rich Asians, he used an iPhone XS Max to film a short. And it actually looks pretty good, but you know, then again, you put no, a phone like I, this in a director's hands, you. and of course, they're going to be able to do some good stuff with it. There I is will... one dead giveaway, though, is when he tries to do slow mo uh, footage using the 10s Max, uh, and it, it, and it's uh, footage of a break dancer. Um, I don't like where slow motion is going on smartphones, where everyone's trying to go higher and higher and higher in the frame rates, because it causes flicker in incandescent lighting. One twenty. But that's the thing. Like, was it a was it a bright or a dim shot? It was. It was a bright. It was a well lit shot inside of like a garage. Uh no, but it was inside a garage. See, that's the problem. It's basic yeah. principle of of filming. I mean, your shutter speed determines everything. Yeah, exactly. And so if if you're if you're gonna give me a nine hundred and sixty frame per second video, which the iPhone doesn't, it's two hundred and forty. But if yep. you're doing 240, you better make sure you get me. Uh, like, what's the maximum shutter speed of an iPhone? Is the question. I just yeah, don't think. It, I just I don't think it's capable of providing enough shutter speed to compensate for that frame rate. And therefore, yeah. you need a lot of light. You can't do good slow mo if it's not in daylight. You yeah, just can't. exactly. That's why just, 120. Uh, 120 is perfect. Why is everyone going 240? Like 120 was perfectly fine. And it didn't cause flicker. Anyway, sorry, we keep interrupting Brandon. Uh, Go for it. I, I was just gonna say, I just took a picture for the first time on the on the XS Max, and the zero shutter lag thing is real. Like, I can't believe how fast it takes the picture. Do you guys remember the first iPhone? You'd see this animation went. Shh, shh. It was like literally three seconds. But I, I, I may check it out. Take a picture. Well, there go if you the, use the camera the, a lot, there goes your battery on, life I'm, because I'm, it's I'm always restoring the damn Apple Watch. Oh, though, man. Geez. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> Well, it's my crazy. theory with that, unfortunately, is that if it's always doing something so that you have zero shutter lag, that's also going to 
it's going to cut into the battery. And um, there's a story that just broke today about about the battery life on the two phones. And apparently, it's uh, Jules was doing the math for me over here. Uh, the iPhone 10 has a 2659 milliamp hour battery. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Let me. Let me change that. The iPhone 10 had a 2716 milliamp hour battery, while the 10s has a lower capacity at 2659. Almost the same. Yeah, but you've got the seven nanometer processor. Like every time that Apple has made a jump to in nanometers, meaning a drop, uh, technically, uh, every time that they've done that, they have reduced the battery size. If you remember, they did it when they did the 64 bit between the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 5s. They dropped the battery size. Yep. Uh, they did the same thing between the six and the six S, uh, and you know it's what's happening now. I yeah. guess so. I mean, so apparently, apparently, obviously, people are going to be up in arms about that whole thing. Um, you know. Meanwhile, we have this battery in the Note Nine, but the we'll see what happens there. But, but I'm, I, I'm not looking forward to the fact that it, zero shutter lag might be great, but if it's always doing something, that means battery life at, for a vlogger is going to be much lower. No, I'm going to defend iPhones. Uh, our Galaxy S9 review, our there's a video that we did comparing the iPhone 10 versus the Note 9 and data speeds. Uh, and I think there's another. I'm not talking to you, Bixby. Damn it! <laughs> what? God, what? Why would it turn? On? You didn't. You didn't even I, say I, anything. I, exactly. It's the worst. It is just so <laughs> weird. Worst. It is so dumb. It doesn't even know when you're not talking to it. It's crazy. <laughs> bad. Uh, but uh, so I, these videos have a lot of footage filmed in an iPhone 10 at 4K at 60. You need a gimbal. Uh, but if you like, if you use a DJI Osmo with an iPhone 10 at 1080p at 60, it is incredible. It's it's it, for a phone, it's really good. I'll take you up on that. I will use my Osmo 2. Let's see how it turns out. I'm looking forward to that now. Um, okay, we have one last story as far as iPhones go, but I do want to just call out one person that was in the live chat. Um, okay, maybe I do drink fancy tea, and that's a lot of you know, that's a lot of money every day sometimes. Okay, I get it, but still, these phones are very expensive. <laughs> Someone was like, "Josh drinks twenty five dollars worth of fancy tea every day." What is he talking about? I'm like, "Hey, uh, uh, everyone has a vice." <laughs> All right, so our final story on uh, the iPhones, at least, uh, have to do with the iPhone Ten R, which I will admit I'm kind of excited to check out. I was I was disappointed when the Ten R was not. I, I I didn't really keep up with the news. The Ten R was not available for pre order yet when I got the Ten S Max. Um, I think that I would actually be excited the way that I wasn't with the 10s Max uh, to check out the 10R. Um, any takes from you guys about this uh, metal phone? Fine, bringing back metal, but uh, I uh, so probably if they would have launched the iPhone 10s in red, that would have been like, oh, I want that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that the coolest thing about the 10 the the 10R is really the color options, and that yep. red looks really cool. I'm going yellow, yellow, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brandon? Oh, sorry. My headphones. <laughs> I had to stop working. I, I, I agree with Jaime that the coolest part about that is is the colors. Um otherwise, like I don't know. It doesn't have the OLED screen. It has what a liquid L C D. What does that even mean? Well, I, I don't know. Like Apple does really good LCDs. Like I'll sure. give them that. I, I I don't like I use the eight plus at some point and I don't really tell a difference with the 10 like at all. Uh, well, so, do, you, do you have a hot take on this whole little controversy about the liquid retina display having the same PPI as the iPhone four? Okay. <laughs> Was that iPhone four? But yeah, but that's the thing. Like, I mean, Apple, Apple, if you do, what is what was the PPI on the eight plus? I and on the remember. eight, so they're they're literally just making a lateral phone with a notch. That's what they're mm -hmm. doing. They're giving people like a consolation if they can't buy the ten S. And I, I think yeah. that, you know they're building a phone for everybody at every price point. They're keeping the seven, they're keeping the eight. Then they've got the ten R, and then they've got the ten S and ten X Max. You can pick whichever iPhone you want. Please don't buy the seven, everybody. That's the worst iPhone ever. I would highly recommend the eight, eight plus. Those were good. Um, oh my god! And and by the way, now that we're in the podcast, let's um, let's talk about these upgrades before. If you want, let, let's finish with the ten R. But then I have something to say about the Apple Watch before before I forget. Okay. Um, I, I guess uh, to to our producer, uh, maybe we won't be talking about this Huawei story at the end. <laughs> 
But there is one thing that I do want to say, though. There's, there's one thing that I want to make sure that we touch upon it. We don't have to talk at length about it. Um, okay. There were no AirPods at the event. I was a little bit disappointed about that because I wanted to see where they would take the AirPods next. Um, there wasn't even the Air Power. Uh, and apparently Huawei is going to start making their own version of the, of, of the AirPods uh, or that design that does have wireless charging called the FreeBuds. Uh, but <laughs> I just kind of like, I would recommend all the listeners and viewers go to, go, go to Pocket Now and check out this story because it's kind of an interesting concept of having the uh, FreeBuds, the case, actually have a wireless charging in and out available so you can charge your phone using the battery in the FreeBuds case. I kind of that's kind of cool. Uh, you you have to. Oh, hold on, Jules is correcting me. Sorry. Uh, oh, you can charge. Oh, sorry, you can charge the free buds using the phone. There you go. Thank you. Sorry, I was saying that wrong. So the phone can wirelessly charge the free buds uh, when they're in their case, which I think is kind of that's still cool. I mean, I, I got I got that's mixed cool. up, but that's still pretty cool. Uh, you have to buy into that ecosystem, obviously, but that's the way Apple works anyway. So hopefully, we'll get Air Power at some point. In the future, Air, Air, AirPods 2 might actually be pretty awesome, and um, it'll dictate how truly wireless earbuds are in the future. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I gave my two cents on that particular part. So make sure you check out that story on pocketnow.com. All right, so uh, Jaime with his final hot takes before we wrap up. The Apple Watch Series 3 was a device that I recommended, uh, that I was like, yes, finally, we've, we have an Apple Watch that can run applications, and that brings, like in the case of the Series 2, it brought ceramic at the back. Uh, and so it didn't scratch, and that's the only way that these sensors are going to work well. Have you guys noticed the specifications for the Series 3? The new, Pretty much what they're not telling people, it's, it's not the same watch. It's not the same Series 3 that we got previously. So if you order the GPS-only variant, now that one doesn't have ceramic. It has a composite back, and the only way for you to get ceramic on Series 3 is if you go for the LTE variant. Huh. Do not, I repeat, do not buy an Apple Watch with a composite back. You're going to save a little money, but that composite back, because of the charger design, will scratch so much, so much that the sensors won't work. Oh, wow. And so it just doesn't make any sense for you to pay a little less money for a Series 3 anymore. And it pisses me off, like... Apple is like, yeah, so now we're going to have the Series 4 and the Series 3, and you can pick whichever one, but they're not being straightforward with you in the fact that they're making changes to Series 3, so it's not the same watch. Pisses me off, man. Well, now we know. Thank you. Buyers beware. Definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, I guess we can go ahead and call it on this one. Um, so a lot of talking about the iPhone uh, XS, the XS Max. Make sure you get into the comments down below and let us know what you think of the phone. If you picked it up today, after all, there were a lot of people at the Apple stores. Uh, and I guess uh, a lot of people are calling this iPhone day. So uh, there is one every year. So hopefully you had a good one today. Uh, that is it for now. The weekly is just as much a conversation as it is a show. So make sure you make your voices heard either in the comment sections below, like I just said, or by email emailing us at the address podcast at pocketnow.com. You can also tag the cast on Twitter using the hashtag PNWeekly. Jaime Rivera is, of course, at Jaime underscore Rivera. Remember that underscore. And Brandon Miniman is found at Brandon Mini Man. And someone in the live chat asked what my Instagram is. Well, you can find me at JV Tech Tea all over the place. So JV loves tech and I love drinking tea. $25 worth of tea every day, maybe, <laughs> sometimes, not always. <laughs> Pocket Now is at Pocket Now on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and YouTube in English and Espanol, where you can find more news on the Pocket Now Daily and Pocket Now Audio every weekday. We're also on PocketNow.com for all of your mobile tech needs. We'd certainly appreciate your feedback on Google, Apple, Stitcher, Pocket Cast, or wherever you may happen to be streaming us, because without you, we wouldn't have been able to make this show for your eyes and ears for now 324 weeks straight. And with that, we're going to call it on this edition of the Weekly Take Care, and we will talk tech again next week.